Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TC Talk, back today with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing how to Ira part four. We're gonna be talking about some meta matchups. What is the hero good into? What is she bad into? Kind of what's in the middle. Just kind of give you a good lay of the land of like, you know, where does Ira sit in terms of the meta game, at least from my perspective. So hopefully you enjoyed this. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're a long staying supporter, thank you so much as always. Feel free to check out the Discord down below. Um, if anyone wants to also check out the channel membership, if you want to support the channel in a different way, maybe you've been watching for a long time uh, and you want to try to support in another way, definitely uh, check that out as well. But we'll get right into it. So a couple notes before we go into this. I, I've preloaded all of the matchups. Um, one, this is just my opinion, right? You might find it different or, and that's completely fine. I definitely encourage anybody to give me their take on where they think Iris sits in terms of like other um, heroes. Another thing is this is as of November 2024. So if you're watching this like six months from now, right, it might have changed, right? We might have gotten a different card pool, like Fi is about to get some support with Draconic Ninja, which might change some things, right? Assassin's about to get some more support, so on and so forth. So definitely keep that in mind as well. And then the third thing that I wanted to bring up for this specifically for Ira is Ira's a really, and it's kind of like my opening point. Ira's a really funny hero. Like we have favored one, one, one wrong move and it's over, which just means they can spike you really good if they get the right cards. Every point matters, which basically means 50, 50 unfavored. And then I have a like waiting room one right here, right? The difference between like the most favored matchup and the most unfavored matchup is not a lot. Ira is literally like a 55-45 hero. She's either slightly unfavored or slightly favored into most every matchup. The only really unfavored matchup, so when I say really unfavored, I mean like 40-60, is Florian and Enigma. And the only really, there is truly no 60-40 matchup for her, in my opinion. The only one I could see, which is kind of funny, and that's it's just my opinion, is actually Guardian in general. I think Victor, um, even though Victor's a little bit down here, Victor can be up there, if, if depending on the build, but really it's just like generic Guardian. Other than that, all of her matchups sit between like she's either 55-45 or 45-55. So even though this is this giant list, right, keep it a little bit with a grain of salt in terms of the difference between the top and the bottom of this list isn't very much, right? So that's kind of the first thing uh, that I wanted to point out. So we'll kind of go into this. We'll talk about the ones in the in the in the middle first. So one wrong move and it's over basically means that I don't see these matchups as favored or unfavored. I see them as kind of spiky. Whereas if you can disrupt the the opponent enough through certain tech cards and really keep it a fair game as much as possible, then you feel really good about the matchup. However, if they get the right cards at the right time and you don't draw like a good D react, or maybe you get a cursed hand with like all reds with Kano or Dorinthia, you draw like three, two blocks and she hits the, you know, the nuts in terms of like her reactions and be able to stack counters or Dio just gets that nutty 40 damage turn, 30 damage turn on you. They can just win the game because Ira's biggest flaw as a hero is once she gets behind in life by like i'd say if i had to give a generic amount 15 ish life 12 to 15 life it, it becomes really hard to come back because she doesn't have that kind of term where she can just say give me your whole hand right she really doesn't unless it's like a really key tech like disruption piece so these heroes can present, pose some problems where if you can't keep that disruption consistent, like with Dio, if you can't keep sending weakest links and CNCs um, and threatening mass basically every turn and stuff like that, then you can, or, or you see your D reacts at the right time and she gets some boom grenades on you, then it can be really bad. Same thing with Dorinthia. If you see your D reacts at a decent pace uh, and you're blocking properly and you're reading what she's doing, then it feels pretty good. But if you get this one ram turn where you have like three red two blocks, like a spin wheel kick, a bittering, and I don't know, something else. Um, and she has like a really good turn where she can stack one or two counters with like a glistening, then it's really bad for you. Same thing with Kano. You can run AB3 on your list, but if you get that cursed hand where you are on, you know, four reds and it's something like a torn a tempo, pounding gale, sensor, command and conquer and you're like okay i have no go again no way of giving go again i just have to swing for five and hope to god you can't kill me um 
they can kind of just spiral out of control. But if you don't get those unfortunate like draw sequences, they feel overall pretty good. Hopefully that makes sense. They're the weirdest matchups in my opinion. Then we have the every point matters, and I'm going to go on the opposite sides. The every point matters basically means 50-50. That's, that's, that's how I see these matchups. Um, Tech Levasin, I think if we ever got to a heavy hitter style meta again, where we're you know really going for the late game, it's a lot of value plays. I would actually think Tech Levasin falls to here um, because Tech Levasin can play like that super late game for singularity. But right now, Tech of Austin can't just play that way. And until Tech of Austin can, it's kind of a 50 50 game. Um, he can really give you some fits by continuously getting armor value on your Kadachis. But overall, it's not too bad. Uh, Victor, I honestly might even put Victor here. Uh, actually, I'm going to put Victor there. We'll, we'll, I, I went back and forth before this video started on where Victor should be. Um, this rise 50 50. I know it sounds crazy because it's arguably the best deck in the game from a matchup perspective right now but you do pretty well you can handle the split damage pretty decent and viscera really has to stack those crazy spike turns to really punish you and you can kind of mid-range them out um and you can use things like a race face uh command and conquer forcing mass triggers all this other stuff to really like upset what they're trying to do so i i don't mind viscera as much it's like a 50 50 and then the brutes are truly 50 50 like both of these matchups are super fun um it's like a value game on both sides uh same thing a race face is actually pretty good into uh Leviah because it turns off blood or both of them because it turns off blood rush bellow because brute there's no brute attacks anymore weakest link is good into both of them because ko runs weak uh wild ride and bear fangs Leviah runs a lot of no blocks um command and conquer is pretty good into them because they're trying to arsenal key pieces things like that it's pretty nice so all those are 50 50s so that's kind of like the easier to explain ones when it goes to favored um we'll kind of go in order of like general order so i feel pretty good into both guardians yes they can do some crazy stuff with crush effects and really hit you with dominates early game and if they do that and gain some tempo then it's a little bit better for them but overall i thought i never would say this is a ninja but you just outvalue them at 40 life total like <laughs> they just they struggle you have a lot of defense reactions you know fate sinks flick flax um if you're on a shuko build you have a good amount of armor uh, and they just can't keep up most of the time. I've had very little to no trouble so far with Guardians. I'm sure a very high level Guardian player could even the odds, right? And it's like a really close game. But all skill levels, assuming, I think that it's favored. Assassin, again, I never in a million years thought that I would feel favored into Assassin as a ninja, but you do. And I haven't had a I, up until the testing, I haven't had a lot of... Um, experience with Iron to assassin just because i'm blood tnc a lot right but i mean new feels super favored I, th I don't think i've lost to a new yet i've only played one arachne and that that's also the thing i've pretty much played against every single hero in this list with the exception of olympia i haven't played against an olympia i haven't played against a tech and i haven't played against uh, anyone else? No, I played against everyone else. I played against everyone else at least one or two times. Olympia and Tech Lavoster are the only two I haven't seen. Um, but yeah, Assassin feels really good. Like, you don't really care about their banish effects. Uziri can be a little tricky if you don't find your D-Reacts just because she has, like, hand disruption. But these two, like, you can just play around them a lot. Um, you really don't care if she banishes your blues. It really doesn't do much. Arachne, you just outvalue for the most part. You have a lot of defense reactions. You have good armor. Assassin feels good. Um, Azalea feels good. Uh, it can get a little bit swingy if they really high roll, but that's just Azalea. That's with every hero pretty much that Azalea plays. That's not Guardian. So, or CYB Enigma. But overall, Azalea feels pretty good, for, especially if you can go first and get them off an arsenal, and then you just start, you know, outvaluing them with D reacts. If Azalea is ever, if Iro is ever like at the top of the meta to the to the point where you have to plan for her, and Azalea maybe ran Dreadbore on the side, then it comes a little tricky. And if you're expecting that, then you have to adjust. But right now, it's favored. Bolton, Bolton's a little weird because you do have a lot of attack actions, but you do have a lot of defense actions, and you can kind of whittle them down. I think a, um, I think a Raiden Bolton would be a little bit more tricky than Sabers, but. 
really i've only played this matchup twice i won both of them i feel pretty good into it honestly i have a lot of defense reactions um you can build the list to really hate on this if you want to uh you can run oasis on the side um command and conquer is good into bolton um uh really no other really crazy disruption pieces but this is the main one dash i've played a couple times i've been playing against a slab dash i think slab dash would be a little bit tricky that'd be really close but really the boost and mid-range versions of this list you just kind of outvalue same thing with katsu katsu is just really bad right now um kind of going down the line nothing crazy here katsu and fire kind of the same boat where you just outvalue them yes can they have spike turns where if you've been blocking properly one time they just punish you for it of course that's just ninja but well other ninjas but these two overall i feel pretty good into Asilio, there are some insanely talented like mid-range Asilios out there and I would love to play them more to kind of see get a feel of what that style of the matchup goes but kind of like the zero cost you know balls to the wall version you, you're doing pretty well into they have to really like get their combo turn early to, to give you trouble Reinar I in blitz was terrible but in CC it hasn't been that bad I've only played it like twice though um, but just from a lot of these opinions too I'm kind of getting a little bit from blitz but um mostly cc reinar it feels pretty good unless they just get you crazy with the blood rush bell is early you kind of just outvalue them the tank club build can be a little bit more grindy but overall feel good been set has been free um that matchup has not been an issue at all you can just kind of really deal with their split damage pretty well and unless they really get a nutty setup turn you just win uh more times than not victor is the weird one i will put victor in on in favored with the other guardians it's just not quite as much they can kind of get the value back with drawing cards however if they run all those block cards your your clashes aren't bad you have a lot of six powers a lot of five powers you can really get a like equal or beat them depending on what they find um and then olympia olympia is weird if it's the decimator build i think you could still win it out like you can play for the really late game and just fat stack. If it's a dynamo axe build, it, be, it might move down to here, but not quite good as Kasai. So I can still keep it in favor. Just one of the few matchups I haven't played, one of the two. Um, and then we get to the unfavorites. The unfavorites are a little bit rough. Uh, and it's kind of like different levels of unfavored. Like if I were to do this on the fly, which I'm going to, we have unfavored and then we have really unfavored. So unfavored just means like you have to play really well to win. Um, whereas really unfavored kind of means you're in trouble. Oh, that's really unfavored. Lol. Um, unfavored just means like, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna be a little bit rough, but if you play really, really well and you have like one good hand cycle go your way, you're in a pretty good spot. Um, but in terms of really unfavored this is kind of where i see it personally um i think these three are the worst the unfavored bracket is this so you have stuff like aurora is really tricky you can build a list to beat her uh more consistently with some other target disruption things like cut down the size uh and then you have weakest links you have command and conquer stuff like that uh, and you really play for that game plan. But overall, she's really difficult. The split damage is really hard. And it's not like Viscerai or anything like that. Like Arc Lightning is a hell of a card. Um, and it's really hard to deal with it. Channel Lightning Valley, also the draw that Viscerai doesn't get is super, super good. It's, she's she's difficult. I think a good Aurora is going to give you fits. Kasai is really rough. Dynamo Warrior, I think, has always been a trouble for uh, Ira. I've only played this once or twice in CC. But just from what I know about how the hero operates <laughs> in terms of Ira. Kadachis don't like Dynamo. It, that, it, I mean, it's pretty simple there. Um, Max is really interesting. I think it's unfavored all but slightly. Like all of these are like 45-55. Max is a little bit hard because if you're both playing for that later game, um, Max can just go into mech and then hit you with high octane and hit you for 40 and kill you. So you have to kind of tempo out Max a little bit more, which causes you to not get the value game as much. It's definitely not like horrible like i'm not wincing to see a max across the table but it's definitely not favored in my opinion prism is really interesting because if you find your poppers early and you have six to nine of them and you fear d reacts you can just kind of value them out really bad um but if they find like a key arc light when you're kadachi like you kadachi for one they arc light you and then you know you have to arc or whatever they take some damage arc light you they can basically take a lot of tempo with arc light which really can hurt you and if you don't find a popper on the next turn they can kind of really 
go to the races. It can be a little weird. I've literally had games against Prism so far, and Prism's such one of the hardest heroes to evaluate just because the, the hero is so hard to play. You get all levels of skill, and that is no hate on anyone. It's just you might get someone who's a Prism main who's been playing Prism forever and punishes you, and then you get someone who's just an okay Prism player. And right now, the difference between a good and a great Prism player is like night and day. So I've had Prism players where I beat them literally like 38 life to zero because my poppers came in at the right time. They couldn't quite get it going. I had good D reacts on the air editions, whatever. And then I have Prisms that literally just stone rolled me. So it's kind of, you know, this, that, or the other. Riptide's a little difficult. If it's a full base trap Riptide with like a mid range package, it can be a little hard. Um, they can kind of just stay on you with a value. You, you ping a lot of their traps. Um, it makes it a little bit difficult. It's not super unfavorable, but it's it's okay. And then Zen. The mid-range Zen build is very difficult. It's similar to Max, where like their late game push is really bad against like it's not good for you. You don't want to both be in the teens. You want to be beating them by like five to eight life and have a little bit of a buffer once you get to those twenties and teens life totals. So you have to tempo them out a little bit more. So Zen can be a little bit rough. Um and then really unfavored. The most unfavored matchup isn't even Enigma, in my opinion. It's Florian. Florian is awful. That hero can literally just mid-range you just like you're mid-ranging them, except their end game is 10 times better than yours. Um, it's very, very, very difficult. I honestly think it's the worst matchup for Ira, worse than Enigma. Same thing with Verdance. If it's a OTK Verdance, like the, the Surgeon Ether type build, it sucks. They do the same thing. They use Plow Under, they use Felling in the Crown, they use Channel of Linium Tree, and they just chip you down, chip you down, chip you down, and then kill you at 20 life. Uh, it's very difficult. Earth Heroes are the worst for Ira by far. Then we have Enigma. This one's really unfavored as well, but it it's really weird. You can build a list that's better into it, but they can just, you know, if they get if they get a ward board one turn and you can't kill it with your Pouncing Paws double strike package or something like that it gets really bad really fast so definitely gotta keep an eye on that but it is unfavored i think you can build a list to beat it but you're going to sacrifice a lot of these matchups like once you build a list that beats enigma you sacrifice assassin uh you sacrifice some of the other aggro decks you sacrifice dorinthia you would probably sacrifice dio like these two would move to unfavored uh some of these would move to 50 50 and so on and so forth so that's kind of where I see it. So overall, she's not too bad. It's it's really hard to evaluate Ira because her matchup spread is so close. Like her worst matchup in my eyes is Florian. And if I had to give up doom and gloom percentage, it's probably like 65, 35. That's her worst matchup. And then her best matchup is probably like 60, 40, uh, which is assassins in my opinion. Um, but other than that, she's like, just barely favored or just barely unfavored or 50 50 and everything kind of like how old school hybrid dash was um i always think she'll be pretty relevant in the meta she'll be like in the discussion you always see one squeak in just because it's a really really good uh solid hero that you know has a very consistent and very consistent and i don't want to say easy game plan because it's not there's a lot of decision points in ira but if you're playing it in a calling basically right and you're playing 10 plus rounds iris a deck that isn't going to take as much brain power as some of these other top decks in the format and that can be an advantage to you especially if you run into a lot of 50 50 matchups in the later rounds and you're at like six and one seven and one right you're not going to be as mentally fatigued in my opinion um hopefully that makes sense but yeah this is kind of where i see everything uh if you have any discussions that are different like please let me know this is just these are based off a some I've played every hero, like I said, on this list except Olympia. And what was the other one? Um, can't remember. Oh, oh Tech Lawson. Those are the only two I haven't played a CC game against. Um, I've played Ira a crap ton of Blitz. I know it's a different format, but I just I understand how the hero works into other classes. And just my overall perception. So if something's different, if you don't agree with something, definitely let me know. Um, like I said, if you were to really look at this uh, in terms of you know percentage it kind of looks like this and that's the thing about ira so you can't really make it too crazy or overblown out of proportion right like if i were to do percentage points that's what it would be that's how it would look so let me know what your thoughts are again this is as of november 2024 uh if you have something different 
I'd love to hear it. Uh, everyone's got a different list and a different perception, so it'd be really cool. But yeah, if you enjoy this type of content, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. If not me, it's completely fine. Go to another creator, leave a like, comment, subscribe on their stuff. Let's get more people seeing this game. Uh, and yeah, I'll see y'all next time on TC Talk. Thank y'all so much.